Hey guys, Constance here. Welcome back to A Good Life Farm. Um, so it is going to be a really busy week this week. Uh, my parents are actually in town. They are here for a visit, uh, but they are also here to look at properties. And Mr. Smith is just returning from running an errand, so now the dogs are gonna go crazy. Um, yes, so it is going to be a busy week. I don't know how many videos I'm going to be able to get done. I will try and do my, my regular uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday videos. Uh, if I can get some more in, that will be great. But uh, if I can't, then, you know, to look for the three. Uh, I do want to mention that the uh, March Canning Madness collaboration is still going on all through the month of March, Monday through Friday videos. If you have missed any of them, I will put a link to the playlist down below. Be sure to watch all of the videos and comment because again, there is a giveaway taking place with all sorts of goodies and leaving comments on those videos is how you enter. Um, so I am actually going to talk to you about my seed storage today. I've had some comments and questions and so I just thought I would share that with all of you. So let me take a sip of my coffee, wait for the dogs to quiet down because he's about to walk in and they're going to go nuts. And then we'll talk seed storage. All right, so, Seed storage. Um, first of all, this is what I have stored my seeds in for quite some time. They are plastic cases that you would get at craft stores, Amazon, etc. Um, I started off with one of these. Go lay down. And these are actually really handy. Um, containers. It's a big case and inside you have multiple smaller cases that are, it, it's basically, it's, it's photo storage is what it is. And these cases are just the perfect size for seed packets. Um, just about any seed packet will fit in here. And then I used a label maker to label the contents of all the individual cases. And I have used these cases for years. Um, I, start, I started off with one, then I added another, and another, <laughs> and until ultimately I had three of them, which I have all sitting up here. I am actually going to be giving these to a friend of mine because she said she needed to get some more seed storage, and I said, well, just so happens that I've got a few that I'm not going to be using so I'm going to pass these along uh, to her because what I have instead is this I shared a while back that I had gotten this cabinet at one of the antique stores that I visit and this thing was a beast it is solid solid metal um, empty. Now we had taken all of the drawers out, Mr. Smith and I, and even with all of the drawers out, this thing weighs at least 200 pounds. Just just the, the body of it. With the drawers in, I can only imagine. It's crazy how heavy this is. It is, I believe, solid steel. <laughs> um, it used to have, at some point, it had like a wood panel that inlaid in the sides um, but I'm pretty sure this thing went through a fire because when I brought it home it had kind of a weird smell to it the panels that should have been in here are gone and when you opened the drawers there was soot just everywhere and so of course I scrubbed it all out um, cleaned it all out. The inside, the, where the drawers go, it's actually solid. So if you got one drawer out, you would not have access to any of the other contents in any of the other drawers. Uh, and there's actually a thing where you can tell there used to be some sort of locking device for this. So, I mean, I don't know 
what this was used for, but these drawers are kind of the size of index cards. Um, so it was, I don't think it was a library um, like card catalog just because of the security features that you could tell once existed with this. Um, I think it'd be kind of overkill for library cards or, or card catalogs. So I'm thinking it was maybe military related or something like that. It's hard to tell. But when I bought it, I thought this is the perfect thing to use for my seed storage. And I have it here at the end of the hallway. I've got a bedroom door here, a bedroom door here, and there was this kind of corner right over here where nothing, it was just kind of dead space. And because this part of the hallway is always cool, even in the summertime, it's nice and cool in here. I thought this would be the perfect spot to put this because it's out of the way. It doesn't hinder access to either of the doors that are down here. And uh, it won't take up any other space that is in the house because we do have a small home, doesn't have a lot of storage. And so we utilize every little bit that we can find. So that is why I put this here. When I was using these cases, because they are kind of clear, you can, uh, light can get in here. Seeds should really be stored in cool, dark places. And so I always stored these in the floor of my bedroom closet, because again, it's always nice and cool down there and um, away from sunlight. So the seed storage, my, my seed, I'm going to call this my seed vault because it's, I mean, it was had security features to it. So we're going to call it a vault. So let me show you what I've got in here. So in the top drawer, now, if you notice down on the drawers here, I used my handy dandy little label maker to label what I've got in every drawer. But this one I didn't didn't put anything uh, on as far as labels go because I'm using this for some miscellaneous items that kind of go with my seeds. First of all, my Clyde's Garden Planner. If you are not familiar with these, these things, they're very inexpensive, about $5 or so. You can find them on all sorts of websites, including Amazon. Um, but these are so, so handy. So you would use this when you are planning out when to start seeds, when to plant seeds, when to transplant seeds, and all of that. You would go online, look up your zip code, and figure out when your last freeze or frost date is for your specific area. Don't just go by your garden zone because your garden zone has nothing to do with that. Your garden zone determines what can last through the winter that it determines what your coldest point usually is so things that would need to overwinter outside and survive my winter that's what that garden zone is for that's what it tells you so things that are good for my garden zone can survive my winters if it's something for a more tropical garden zone it gets too cold here and it's not going to live through my winter so when it a lot of people uh, get confused with that and they think that your garden zone determines when you plant things and it doesn't because i'm in northern alabama there's people in washington state who have the exact same garden zone that i have but we do not have the same frost dates and freeze dates not even close so you want to look up when your dates are not your garden zone and then once you know what your dates are i actually wrote them on right on here with some pen because then i know with you know i don't have to look it up all the time or or try to remember it and so i wrote right here where i live my last typical frost is april 18th and so you take that date what your last frost is and then you use the little slider here hold on let me grab hold of it and you slide it to line up with the date on the top which is this date right here so i would take the red line line it up with april 18th 
which is right about there. And then I can look at all of the categories here. You've got the beans, you've got lettuce, corn, you know, all the different things. And you can look at when you should plant what. And it tells you whether it should be direct sowed outside, whether you should start it indoors, or what exactly you would need to do. And then if you slide it all the way over, it exposes this information for each of these items. And it gives you a little bit of a guide as far as how far apart you should put your plants or your rows, how deep you might need to put your seeds and all of that information. And this side is for the spring, but if you flip it over, it's also got your fall schedule, what you should plant when. And October 9th is my average first uh, freeze or first frost date. And so I wrote it there on the fall side. And so because I use this so much for planting, I just keep it right here with my seeds. And I had actually misplaced this one at one point. And so I actually got two more of them. Um, Haas Tools, which you can see labeled right there. Uh, last year, Haas Tools had a sale, buy one, get one free. And so I ordered one when I ordered my some seeds from them. And so I got two of them. And of course, as soon as I get them, I find my other one. <laughs> That's how that works. So I just keep them right here. Um, I've also got a bag full of uh, inoculant. This is, it's basically um, like an enzyme or a hormone that helps certain types of seeds germinate. So I just keep that in here. Then I've got a baggie of some of my, my labels for my trays when I use those or when I'm starting seeds to label what I've got. I've actually got a whole bunch more of these. I need to get them and put them all together. And then I do have a couple little plastic containers. These, these are two of them from one of these. So I'm going to take the contents out and put them in something else. Um, but these are actually just little bags that I got from the craft store and it's just for saving seeds in and I've got them in two different sizes. So I keep those in here and then all the seeds. So in the second drawer here, I've got beans on this side and then on the other side I have basils and broccoli and cauliflower. I just put those together because they kind of go together. And so when you open the drawer, it has two columns and then it has this little divider uh, piece that would be used to keep those index cards, you know, straight. But I just use it as a divider for the different sections. And this whole side is beans, but I have, I have them kind of divided into different types. Of course, over here, I've got my broccoli and my cauliflower, and I've got all different kinds of basils back here. I grow a bunch of different types, and so I actually gave basil its own section. Now, this drawer is actually a little bit damaged. There's something wrong with the rollers that are in there, and so it only comes out halfway, so I could only use the front um, of this drawer. And that's the problem when you're using antiques, you know, sometimes things happen and things don't quite work right, but that's all right. So back here I have field peas and there's just a few of them. And then I've also got a few um, things of ground cherries and I didn't need a ton of space. So I thought these would be fine in the same section because clearly they're very different and it wouldn't be hard to figure out which was which. This side is all, all things I would categorize as greens, whether it's kale or spinach or chard or anything like that. I have them all right here. Now the next drawer here is all flowers. I have one section that's all kinds of zinnias, one section that's all different kinds of cosmos, this one is all sorts of different kinds of flowers. And then this one is all sunflowers. You can kind of figure out what my favorite kinds of flowers are. <laughs> lots of cosmos, 
lots of zinnias, lots of sunflowers. Sunflowers is definitely my favorite because I've got just about every kind you can think of here. <laughs> um, yes, lots and lots of sunflowers. And then this one I have herbs, melons, and lettuces. I'm, I'm basically going in alphabetical order according to uh, categories. And so here we've got melons. I've got different types of lettuce. Uh, over here I've got two different sections of herbs, whether they are medicinal herbs or uh, culinary herbs. Then in the next one I've got peppers. Over here I have squash and gourds and then root veggies. So we've got cayenne peppers, Tabasco peppers, all the different types of spicy peppers here. Back here I've got the uh, milder or sweet types of peppers. I've got my root veggies back here like uh, radishes and beets and turnips and parsnips. Of course I don't have carrots in here because I have a whole bunch of carrots so I gave them their own section. And then down here is the um, squash and the gourds, whether they're pumpkins or zucchini, any kind of squash or gourds, which I don't grow very many kinds of gourds. Um, generally it's just the loofah gourds and so I have those down here. The next one is tomatoes, peas, and miscellaneous. So I've got all different types of tomatoes, and I do have them sort of sorted. Uh, we've got all the big classic red uh, tomatoes back here. Then I've got kind of the beautiful, colorful kinds of tomatoes. This stack is all paste tomatoes, and then the smaller like cherry tomatoes or saladettes, which I don't grow very many of those. And then over here I've got the peas, and then just some assorted um, things that I only have like maybe one packet of or, or things like that. And then the bottom two drawers are still empty. So there you go. That is how I store all of my seeds. This kind of setup works very well for me. And as you can see, I do have a little bit more space for some more seeds if I need to add to it. <laughs> all right, so that's it for today. Thanks for hanging out with me here again at the homestead. My name is Constance at A Good Life Farm, and I'll talk to y'all next time.